हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द भक्ति मूवमेंट ऑफ संत तुकाराम वी विल नो अ लिटिल मोर अबाउट द बर्थ ऑफ द मूवमेंट एंड आल्सो अबाउट द लाइफ ऑफ संत तुकाराम वी विल आल्सो नो अ लिटिल मोर अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अभंग्स रिटन बाय द संत एंड अंडरस्टैंड द सिंप्लिसिटी ऑफ हिज लैंग्वेज बिफोर इस्लाम केम टू इंडिया the dominant religions that existed were hinduism jainism and buddhism many schools of philosophy originated while hinduism lost its simplicity two different sects vaishnavism and shaivism appeared bringing with them shakti worship as well into existence when islam came to india the situation began to change superstitions were believed strongly caste system prevailed and untouchability blind worshiping and inequality began causing strong disagreements among different sections of society on the one hand islam began preaching unity of god and brotherhood of man it stressed on monotheism evils were removed to a greater extent their preaching was pure which was called bhakti to attain god among the hindus the nayanmars worshiped shiva and the alvars worshiped vishnu they carried the message of love and devotion and taught vedic faith to revive the old vedic religion saints like sankara ramanuj and madhav gave new concepts of god in north india Muslim saints contributed in bringing people together and serving humanity and the Muslim saints of the Sufi movement became more liberal and took up the challenge of getting rid of evils of the society many such saints lived between 8th century and 16th century one such saint is Tukaram or Mahipati the bhakti poetry so a phenomenal revolution bringing marathi speaking people together as never before the poet singers sang together in chorus the musical literary discourses or kirtans they were a blend of music and lyrics and appeared like a new art form bhajan was a new form that was born which stressed its key elements by turning already chosen lines into refrain it was a kind of democratic literary transaction that even a layman or an illiterate would easily understand the nativism was down to earth and open ended it found its greatest expression in tukaram and 3 centuries later in gyandev and namdev Tukaram was born in a lower shudra class of Bolhoba and Kanakai in the village of Dehu in the West Indian state of Maharashtra. His original name was Tukaram Vilhoba Ambe. Throughout Maharashtra he is known as Sant Tukaram and in the South India he is called Bhakta Tukaram. Due to acute problems at home he had to start supporting his family at the tender age of 13 very soon these problems aggravated with the death of his parents his various birth years may be taken as 1577 1598 1608 and 1609 and his death was in 1650 with much more certainty tukaram wrote more than 4500 poems called abhangs the work of tukaram has not been preserved in its original form because he was born a shudra the bottom of the caste hierarchy abhang was a special verse form written by tukaram it ran on couplet with 3 and a half feet with the first three syllables rhyming he was unparalleled in the usage of his poetic device while others who tried it 
left it unused in a tacit acknowledgement, unable to know what was to be done with it. The tradition goes adding his signature, Tuka Mahne or Tuka says, at the end of each verse. The group worship was typical with Varkari, Sampradaya, Samad Seva, and Hari Sankirtan throughout. It was group enlightenment rather than just enlightenment for the self. Tukaram was married twice. His first wife, Rakhuma Bai, died in 1602 in her early youth due to famine and starvation, and he got married to Jijabai or Awali, who had been younger than his first wife. With little patience and devotion for God, she was not suited to be Tukaram's wife. They had three sons, Santhu, Vithoba and Narayan. Tukaram had a high spiritual standard in his kirtans or discourses mixed with spiritual poetry. His spirituality was not mythical, but it grounded in the reality of day-to-day -day existence. His spirituality focused on true nature and behavior of a person and his inner peace. He taught through his discourses with simplicity and had a great effect. He repeatedly stressed on the point that orthodox religion like study of the Vedas would be a mere formality. The real expression and concept of religion would be love and affection in our life. A wide array of issues were highlighted and encompassed through his teaching and people could notice the importance of nature and amicability among people. Let us know the basic tenets of his message. The translation of the Bhagavad Gita is the Mantra Gita. Its abhang form is ascribed to Tukaram. From the Bhakti point of view, it is an interpretation made of the Gita. Another work that is ascribed to him is the Ghata, which is a collection of 4,500 abhangs. The main concept of abhangs is to teach people the need to develop spirituality and faith towards God. God is the center of life. Walk through this path of love, serve mankind and you can see God in all is one of the teachings of Sant Tukaram. He also says, your attire of traditions should be cast away. These traditions are those that restrict you from growing in the path of love towards God. Rituals should not be entertained or favored. At the same time, ascetism or preoccupation with austerities should not be displayed. He would say, that even dogs come in saffron color and bears have fur matted on their skin. If living in caves is called spirituality, then rats living in caves also must be doing sadhana or spiritual practice. He was against the acquiring of siddhis or spiritual attainments as he said that they would obstruct the authentic sadhana or spiritual effort to attain the path of salvation. Faith in nature is very important to attain sadhana. He who makes the availability of milk in the breast of a mother for her child and the one who would permit the bursting of foliage from the branches is the one who certainly takes care of everybody. The most important of all is the privilege of being a bhakt or a devotee. It is necessary to exercise in life the chanting of the name of God. He said that even God does not know what the value of His name is. He is unaware of His power. Just as the lotus cannot smell its own fragrance and as the cow does not know the sweetness of its milk, so is God. Only a bee can know the fragrance of a lotus 
and a calf can know the sweetness of a cow's milk. God is like the oyster which does not know the value of its pearl but a dweller can. Thus the bee, the calf and the dweller are the devotees who can know of God and His power. Without a worshipper, how can God assume a form and accept service? The one makes the other beautiful as a gold setting shows off a jewel. Who but God can make the worshipper free from desires? Tuka says, they are drawn to each other like mother and child. Sant Tukaram was initiated by the Lord Hari himself. He sang in praise of the Lord in the form of abhangs which expressed his feelings and philosophical outlook. These were in Marathi, his mother tongue. All of them show a focus on God though they speak of events in his life. The high caste Brahmins hated Tukaram as they felt that he was making them lose their power in the society over the people. He always carried a tambura in his hand. He ran a provision store for his livelihood. He would give anything free of cost to the one who said Ram Krishna Hari, the act which annoyed his wife to no extent. He would leave his shop and start singing and dancing and going to Pandari with them. Many a times, thieves and criminals stole all the money and provisions in the store in his absence. But Tukaram led his life with total love and devotion for Lord Vithal in his heart. Soon his abhangs became very famous and came to be known as Vaishnav Veda. Tukaram felt that the best worship can be done by the mind. The need of instruments and implementation of rules to perform a puja are not required. A devotee needs to understand the purpose of worship which is none other than understanding the mind. It is nothing but knowing the truth. On an Ekadasi day, Tukaram was singing devotional songs and Shivaji was listening to them with great admiration and adoration. Meanwhile, a few Muslim soldiers could trace out the whereabouts of Shivaji. A big troop of 2000 soldiers who wanted to attack Shivaji immediately arrived at the place to arrest Tukaram. The house where bhajans were being sung was also surrounded. People inside were not allowed to go out, nor were others allowed to get in. Informers of Shivaji whispered about the situation to him. Shivaji was worried. One of his bodyguards asked Tukaram's permission for them to move out, for which Tukaram denied, saying that they would not leave till the abhangs were completed. Shivaji thought that only Lord Vithal would be able to save him and if not he would be fortunate enough to die on an Ekadasi day while listening to the abhangs in the company of saints. A Muslim spy entered into the house to check if Shivaji was there but to his astonishment he could not find Shivaji. He came out and informed the same for which the commander ordered his men to kill as many people inside as they could so that Shivaji would luckily or unluckily be one of them. Immediately Lord Vithal had taken the form of Shivaji and come out of the house. He was on a horse and began to ride. The soldiers saw him and started chasing him. Vithal in the form of Shivaji had travelled to a jungle about 40 miles away from Tukaram's place 
and suddenly he disappeared. The soldiers could not understand how they were incapable of catching one person when they were 2000 in number. Vithal whispered into Tukaram's ears about the incident and told him to continue his abhangs without any hesitation or fear. Such incidents in the life of Tukaram are many. Let us hear another incident. In Dehu, there was a lady who looked very beautiful and gorgeous. She was attracted towards Tukaram. Tukaram had always been singing abhangs without noticing around who was watching him. His abhangs would be sung till dawn. One day, the lady came to the place when Tuka was singing just before dawn. She sat down in front of him. As soon as he finished his abhangs, he got up and saw the lady. The lady appeared for him Rukmani, wife of Lord Krishna. He immediately prostrated to her and asked why she had come without Lord Vithal. The lady felt ashamed and realized her folly. She turned into a virtuous lady thereafter. The family of Tukaram had a comparatively large piece of agricultural land in Dehu. Many generations of his ancestors farmed this land and sold its produce. They were called as Shudras and by no means socially or culturally backward as they were traders as profession. They learned to read and write and even maintain accounts. This must have been the primary education that Tukaram received as well. In 1629, there was a terrible famine followed by severe epidemic diseases. His first wife, Rakhuma Bai, was still alive by then, though he got married for the second time. Tukaram loved her dearly, but could not help her in any way during the situation and watched her in sheer helplessness. Soon she died. Some of the biographers described how Tukaram opened the door of his grain house for the people. Like other saints of Bhakti movement, Tukoba also protested against the rigid caste system. He felt that caste had nothing to do with religious aspects and practices and therefore people should cast it away. Abhot, who translated Bhaktalil Amrita based on the life of Tukaram, said in his preface, Tuka became an ascetic. It was not because he could not see in ascetism a way to some spiritual advantage, but because he could make God a central thought that he lost all the interest in his body. It is believed that on an auspicious day, he informed his wife and disciples that Tuka would be going to Vaikuntham or the divine heaven on that particular day. His wife did not believe his words. On the banks of Indravani, when he was singing bhajans, the heavenly flight sent by Lord Vithal reached him. Jijabai noticed it and was astonished. Tukaram boarded it with his body and the whole village saw him going towards heaven. The position of Tukaram in Marathi literature is comparable to that of Shakespeare in English or Goethe in German. He stands as a poet reflecting the genius. There seems to be no other Marathi writer who had so widely influenced Marathi literature since then. His poetry and language has given a shape to Marathi language and is spoken by nearly 50 million people. It is no more just a literary language. He is as great as King James who had given the new Bible version to the speakers of English language. Many illiterate people voice their prayers using Tukaram's lyrics 
to show their love and respect for God. Many insights have been available from various sources and contexts, but his idiom and imagery appear to be from everyday experiences of the people themselves. He is such a great artist that his draftsmanship seems to be the most important part of his genius. Tukaram strongly believed that his verse was not his own but that his mouth was merely a vehicle of God. The power of speech is not one's own. God's the friend, the speech is his. What is a mina to sing sweet tunes? Else is the master who makes it sing. Who, poor me, to speak wise words? It is that world's supporter has made me speak. Who, says Tuka, his art can gauge? He even makes the lame walk without legs. Tukaram sang, time submits to slavery from bonds of illusions. We shall be at liberty. All will be powerful and prosperous. Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra and Chandal. All have rights equally. Women, children, male and female and even prostitutes. In the lyrics of Tukaram, a reader can see that Tukaram challenged the monopoly of Brahmins over knowledge. He roared, he who gets outraged at the touch of a Mahar is not a Brahmin. There is no penance for him in any way. There is the taint of untouchability in him who would not touch a Chandal. His abhangs lashed out at Brahmins who would use Vedas to make all sorts of atrocities on the people. He taught the people that the real recognition of a person is determined not by his birth but by his deeds. He said, truth is the only religion, untruth is bondage. Companionship of the good is where heaven lies and indifference is where hell lies. His intention was never to fight against Brahminism, but for what is good and not injurious. That was the reason why he attracted a huge number of Brahmin devotees even to the present date. His language was only the language of words that people would be able to understand easily. Tukaram speaks the language of Marathi of the common man of rural Maharashtra and not the elite, the highest class of the people. His language is not that which was exclusively used by the priests alone. It is the language of ordinary men like farmers, traders, craftsmen, laborers and also the language of the average housewife. His idiom and imagery is molded from the everyday experience of people though it also contains special information and insights from a variety of sources and contexts. That is why Tukoba's Kirtans influenced millions of people during his time and he has also continued to influence people till the present date as well. A tradition existed from the period of Nyan Dev, the founder of Marathi poetry and the impact of Vithoba and Namdev, the great forerunner of Tukaram. The audiences were none other than common village folk, including women and low caste people. They looked thrilled by the heights of their own language being scaled and scored high. The lyrics of Tukaram looked so beautiful that it was like pure dance, turning nothingness from blank space. A Shudra like Tukaram writing poetry on religious themes in colloquial Marathi was not easy and 
it was a double attack on Brahmin monopoly. Already Nyandev had been a dissident of Varakari tradition using native Marathi language to preach his religious philosophy. Tukaram's first offence was to write in Marathi and the second, the worst, was that he belonged to a very low caste, Shudra, who had no right to any religion. This was observed as orthodoxy, as an act of heresy, but Tukaram faced it with a challenge as a matter of defiance against the caste order. His contribution to the Marathi language is so vast that he is acknowledged as the greatest Marathi poet ever. There is no other Marathi writer who had so deeply and widely influenced Marathi literary culture since Tukaram. His poetry had given a shape to the Marathi language itself. Many lines of his abhangs are used in the colloquial Marathi language regularly. They have become very popular sayings and are used even without the knowledge of their origin, that they are from his abhangs. Either give me my gun or give me Tokoba's veena. I will go from village to village and sing revolutionary songs on this veena. Thus, Tokoba's ideas in the form of abhangs continue to inspire all those who have not been happy with the state of affairs of our country and are waiting eagerly to bring forth a revolutionary change. I hope you enjoyed this session. We have come to its conclusion. Thank you.